Hey guys, I thought it was about time to make a new tutorial for you. Today's tutorial is about creating a map in Blender. Alright, you need to find a map that has a distinct ocean color that separates the landmass. I decided to use a map of J.R.R. Martin's Westeros. We're looking for an image without text, so just your search and there will be many clean maps to use. It's important also that they have a distinct ocean color. So something like these will be perfect for us. Open your image in GIMP and look for the fuzzy select tool. It will select a contiguous region on the basis of color. That sounds small as fuck, but I actually just read it off the tooltips. Now let's invert our selection to get the actual map content selected. Subsequently, we create a path from our selection. The newly created path will show up under the Path tab. Every path that we create will be saved there. Right click on the path and export it. And hey, of course you should aim for the best map name ever. Just make sure to save it as .svg, which is a scalable vector graphic. Scalable vector graphics are often used for logos as they are not tied to image resolution. We need them for our purposes to get a detailed map curve in Blender. Now import the SVG to your blend file. The imported curve will be awfully small. Zoom in a bit to unveil it. Now scale up your curve object and voila there's your map in the making. I'm scaling it in edit mode. Otherwise the normals would cluster the viewport, but you can adjust that also. And as you can see, we can also just toggle them off, so they don't clutter the screen space. And now let's play Rolor and erase parts of the map as it looks too cut off. Of course that might look different for you. Just to be on the safe side here. Go to Curve and verify that the curve is toggled cyclic, which means that there is no opening in the curve object. You need to select all points of the curve in Edit Mode by pressing A and then press Alt-C, which is the shortcut for cyclic. If your curve isn't cyclic, then it will look like this here. And now check the box that says 2D in the curve properties and you will see why it has to be cyclic. So to fill our curve, it has to be closed, obviously. After doing this, just toggle the smaller islands to be cyclic by repeating the process of selecting the sum of its points with L, which selects all adjacent points or vertices, and press Alt-C to toggle it cyclic. It's important that I show you this here. I just don't want you to get lost in case you ran into any problems with this. There might be some problematic parts in your map curve. You can fix those by moving the curve points or by deleting them. They are not needed to create the illusion. Okay, let's now use the extrusion option in the curve shelf. I extrude it quite a bit for now and da 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 da! We are done! Thanks for watching! <clears throat> okay, well it's entirely up to you how far you want to go here. There's a lot more of course. This is a good time to recalculate the normals. Be aware though that you might change the looks of the curve slightly. I also recommend that you check for more overlapping parts, which will be easier to see now that we extruded the curve. In the process of enhancing our curve, I'm trying to add a subsurface modifier here, but the result is barely visible. Then we could also just try Smooth Modify and whilst it achieves interesting results, it's not what we are originally trying to achieve. The solution is much more simple. One of the solutions to achieve a smooth edged map is to run a Remesh Modifier. We do not want to remove the little islands, so uncheck the box as shown. There are a few different types of remesh operations. One of them is blocks, which results in an interesting block mesh map, as you can see.
Now we want to extrude the map further out and in the more problematic parts and delete or adjust them. This might be a bit repetitive, but it's important to have a clean curve object. Once you're done with it again, jump to the curve settings and just increase the depth and adjust it to fit your needs. Now increase the resolutions to improve your map. It is indeed quite usable and the easiest solution. Now I transform the curve to a mesh, but it's really up to you if you want to keep it as a curve. But I like to have a controllable UV for texturing and in the first rendering, we will use Blender internal. Don't worry though, we will use Cycles later. Ok, now in Blender internal, add a simple point lamp. Press Ctrl, Alt and 0 to make your current view, in the viewport, the camera view. Press Shift F to control your camera. I'm using a very weak light here, with the strength of 1 and a small distance. Ok, let's work on the looks of the map and add a new material and a new texture right away. I'll be using a pattern that I made, which is available in one of my texture packages. Don't worry though, I'll provide the files for this tutorial for free. Let's have the texture only control the specularity of the material. Use generated flat to project the texture onto your mesh. Increase the size of the texture. It is tileable and therefore it will still perfectly align after increasing the size. As we let it control the specularity only, we get this cool and subtle effect. By enabling color and increasing the specularity, we can achieve a distinct intensity difference and just improve the visibility of our effect. Another cool effect can be achieved by using a metal texture for the specularity. Let's reset the size to 1. Dragging your mouse across the values selects them all by the way. So just select a metal texture or something similar which you would like to use and play with the values to get more contrast. Again here I am only enabling it to control the specularity. Now it might happen that you have use alpha enabled. If that's the case disable it to use the grayscale information of your image. Now is a good time to get a UV texture from our map to make the texturing process easier. If you didn't convert your curve to a mesh yet, then go ahead and do so please. Now go into edit mode and select all vertices. Press 7 to go into top view and 5 to go into autographic view. Press U and unwrap using project film view, which will give us an undistorted UV as if it was seen from above. Open the image editor to see your UV map and load in the image texture that you are using on the material to reference its position. In the image editor you can scale the UV map using S and move it by pressing G. You can copy the texture name by hovering over it with the mouse and Ctrl C. Paste it in the image file search using Ctrl V. Once you load it in the image texture you can see where the image information will be displayed on the object. Alright, now let's delete the point lamp or just switch it to a sun lamp and rotate it so it has a steep angle to the landmass. The steep angle works well with the specular texture and fades it out where there is less light hitting the surface. Ok, now let's add a simple background plane and scale it up. I'll keep it really simple here, call it something you like and add a texture to the material. There is nothing new here really, so just play with the scaling and the colors. Our next step will be variations in cycles, which will also be a little more interesting. But as you can see it's quite simple once you've figured it out. I also love these tileable patterns as they have almost infinite uses. Here we got a waves like texture and it's in alpha state so the lines are not 100% closing in. In the end I go with a different pattern texture and I change the color of the materials. 
And there you go, that's a simple map object which can be used for explaining videos or fantasy flyovers, anything you can imagine really. But hey, there is a lot more which you will learn in the upcoming part 2. If you like this tutorial, please consider supporting me on Patreon or donate via Gumroad. It really is a lot of work to make these and all the other stuff that you get for free. For now all I can say is thank you for watching and see you in part 2 guys.